So this is a shim. Uh, a lot of people are always confused saying, hey, what's that? It goes behind the race in the case. Basically, it pushes up against the differential so that the taper roller bearings are actually rolling and not just sliding. Uh, it's just the way they're designed. So you can use a caliper like this one. I prefer a dial caliper, really, but these ones work pretty well, too. Uh, here's my inch scale. And you use these little lines here. There's point, uh, point 0.25, point 0.5, point 0.75, 1, you know. Uh, so basically this, this shim is 22,000 thick. So we can use a measurement using a feeler gauge of the space here when everything is all put back together. Add this shim value to that thickness and that's going to be our preload. Uh, I'll, I'll go through that later. So like for now, we just need to install the race. Charles, do you know where the feeder gauge is? Yep, on it. <coughs> Alright, now when you're installing this one, you don't want to seat it all the way. The point of this is to find out how much space there is here when the diff is installed. So you want to leave plenty of room. <coughs> Alright, now I'm going to install the differential without the shim. Simple, you just drop it in place, make sure the gears are meshing, and don't smash your fingers, it hurts. There it goes. Grab the other half of the case. And very carefully set it down. Everything should sort of align itself. Shouldn't really have to worry too much about getting all the pins in the right place. So you make sure you got your dowel rods in place. Give it a couple of taps. Make sure it's getting seated really well. Equal space all the way around. And just kind of tap it down until it's flat. And then once it's flat, we're going to install a couple of screws around the case. Alright, so got the case almost buttoned down all the way. Basically, I've got one here, here, here. I want a couple of places all the way around. I slowly just bring the case down nice and evenly. Going around in a circle or in a cross pattern, however you see fit. I do see it fit. What are you eating? Cough drop? Oh. Hold on. Yeah, it smells good. Alright, now you'll notice that I have more bolts down here by the diff. That's because they're pressing the bearing in. Or the race. So I'm going to tighten these down to spec, about 30 foot-pounds. <coughs> Pete, the human torque wrench, he knows exactly what 30 pounds is.
That was 30.5. I recall. Eh. Alright. Now we grab our feeler gauges. And you start checking. Alright. Preload calculation. I'm a little tired, so hopefully I explain it well. You have your shim behind the bearing race pushing up against the differential. Preload is when you have more material here than you have space. So six thousandths of preload means that you have six thousandths too much shim space for there to be free space. Essentially, you're putting material where it doesn't want to be, and it puts a load on the bearing, which is a good thing. Taper rollers are designed to have a, a little bit of preload. So, it'd be like, we found like out zero, and then like, now I have to preload curves. Yeah, like that. And if it was, if it was negative, then it'd be like... Alright, using our fewer gauges, we found that a 21 thousandths gauge fit into the space that, I, that we were showing you earlier. And we have a 26 thousandths... 26 or... yeah, okay. 27. 20, 27 thousandths, yeah. 27 thousandths mm -hmm. shim. So 27 minus 21, that's 6 thousandths of preload. Because there's 6 extra thousandths of shim to fill the space. Whoa. Essentially... Now it's time to remove the bell housing once again, take out the race Any reason again, not to put the back tires and on. install the shim, uh, and yeah. then put it all back together. Alright, right, when you're ready to put the case back together, uh, you want to clean the, the mating surface, the straight edge, and you want to buy a tube of this stuff. It's anaerobic gasket maker. It just means it's going to cure without oxygen. And a lot of people just use black RTV, but it's never going to cure because it requires oxygen to cure. And there's no oxygen in here. So anaerobic is the way to go. That's that. Well, the last part of this, uh, I figured I should probably show how to install these axle seals. Uh, you just kind of set them in there, push down a little bit. And then you grab your rubber mallet and lightly tap around the outside in a circle. Eventually, it'll work its way down. You don't want to hit it too hard. These things are pretty fragile. And you just keep tapping at it until you got no space.